move. So uh, this group came together because we believe that the First Nations people of the world have such an amazing breadth and depth of knowledge that is always called upon at, to guide but at the same time, we need to be able to support people in their roles as social entrepreneurs, as their roles as business people, as their members of community, um, and to give people a safe space. So um, we want to set up a community of social entrepreneurs who are working towards catalyzing change all around the world, but to really give people a home base to come back to, to come from, and to be supported in everything that they do um, without just focusing on the business, but also focusing on what we need as people, as individuals, as humans of the world. Um, and particularly for people who are our First Nations. Um, so we are hoping to build this community um, all around the world and uh, we were lucky enough to start it between Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> um, and uh, so we're looking forward to bringing together people and um, growing the community to be what the community needs it to be. So we want it to be led by First Nations peoples from around the world who are doing the business of social entrepreneurship and bringing something to the world through their work on SDGs. So we're really excited to be at this, really at the, at the birth of this new community. Um, so this is our first foray into a world summit. <laughs> um, and so we're looking forward to who, who we can get in, who are these amazing, passionate people from around the world and, um, and how can we all work together in support of each other. So, uh, Oh, welcome to, to everyone and thank you for, for taking some time to be with us and to meet with us and help us grow this community. Um, Jason, do you mind um, starting the video? Yeah, no. thank I'll start you. the video. You have to excuse me, everyone. I'm used to um, having the secretariat help me out here. So I think, John, I will just, do I, yeah, we can let that be cool for now. John, do I, I can just play the video. Can everyone see my screen? I'm just about to share it. Or can you share for the screen for me, John? Um, oh, just one second, I'm gonna share my screen. And then it should, don't worry about all the other bits and pieces on it, people. I think, can you see my screen now? Yes, it's working. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm gonna knock it up big. And then, yeah. So this is something we put together for our um, First Nations Place of Standing um, Catalyst Group. Whoops, Jason. I think we've got the no sound version. Oh, we got, <laughs> pardon me. It's my fault. One, one moment. One, one second. You have to be with me. This is not my forte. I'm just going to allow the sound. Doing well. Here we go. Second time around. Allow the sound. Uh, yeah. So tell me if it's not too loud, I'll just take it down a fraction. And here we go. Is that better? Thumbs up. Hmm. No. There's no sound. You might want to start again, Jason. Just, yeah, I will. Stop, just sharing, to see. stop share screen and then um and then start with the to click the box that oh, has yes. sound and then start again. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you, Asha. So that and 
John, can you help me out here? Um, I'm um, trying to look for the video. Did you send it by email? I think you sent it by email, right? Um, yeah, have we? No, I don't think I have. Um, I just loaded it uh, down this afternoon. Jason? Yeah. When, when you click your share screen, you'll yes. be taken to another screen, which is it says to your left, share sound. Click that one. Okay, so when I go share, oh, it says share sound. Yes. Yeah, I, have that, um, I have that, it does. It does click that one and then share, and you will have a sound. Okay. So then I'll try it again. Come back to it. Sorry, excuse all the bits and pieces. This is on my. So, here's the video. Worst comes to worst. I've got this. I've got the words here. There it is. So, and I click up here for the share sound, is it? Yeah, it's right. sharing sound now. It should be down the bottom somewhere, Jason. Um, a little corner in the corner somewhere. That's it there, isn't it? Is that the share sound? I took it off. Apologies, everyone. This is the, so there. Very well. This is perfect, shares. Jason. This is what we're all about. Everyone <laughs> chipping in and helping each other. Yeah, thank you for that. This Selena. is a perfect Not example me. of how we do things. So <laughs> well I'll done. Try again. Can, if, Concept. Uh, to run away. Welcome to your place of standing. Yeah. Can you Our place of standing okay, cool. is the community we want to build to support you and to connect you with, to support others. It comes from a Maori concept, to run away way. It is the place where we feel empowered and connected. Our foundation, our place in the world and our home. From here, we can know and acknowledge our truest selves with all parts of us, connected to form a whole. To explain how we see the workings of our group, we go to the elements. As we follow the journey of our lives, water guides us, representing the past, present and future. Sometimes fast running, hectic, blasting us so there is only now, only what is directly in front of us. Don't sink, swim. Other times, it runs slowly, enveloping and gently guiding us. We may need to push to move in these waters. When we are connected to our place of standing, the waters do not concern us. We can leave the water any time, knowing safety and support are nearby. Our place of standing can become our safety net to catch us and pull us out of the rapids. Or we can flow with the rafts of others into and out of our lives as we connect with those on similar journeys. Our lands give us our foundations, our security and our connection. We can connect to our lands for stability and rely on this to be a place of meeting or a place of solitude. Our lands can pull us from the past and future of the waters and allow us to focus on the now. We can place our feet on our place or walk on the lands of others, knowing that we have the skills to walk between worlds as necessary, to walk with our ancestors, with their guidance and with those sent to us by them. The winds represent for us our cultures, our ancestors, those who whisper in our ears the messages that we need to hear, the ones who tell us how we find and contribute to our place in the world. The winds make up our breath, that give us life, keeps us going, integral to who we are. We work with the wind and we teach others to harness the winds, to move them in their journey, how to listen to the words whispered, the winds fuel the fires of our resolve. The fires of our work, our passions, the demands of our lives. Set upon our place of standing, we build a safe place to move from. We can work with others sometimes to contain the fire to safety, so that we aren't burnt out by any one part of our lives. Other times we fan the flames and build the fire so that we are all warmed safely. We allow ourselves to contribute to the fire of others and we help them manage the flames of a blaze heading in a direction that cannot be controlled. The place of standing are a community of social entrepreneurs who want to catalyse change for themselves, their community, their lands and their cultures. 
Come and build yourself and the community with us. So that's our, our introduction. What we, we've started to pull together some of the ways that we hope to, to work and some of the concepts that we hope resonate with people as an initial introduction into um, this group and this community, this group of doers, I guess, is, is the word that, that we like to, to use pretty regularly is this is a group of doers these are people who do things who make things happen who genuinely catalyze change so um, we hope that this resonates with you as well um, and we'd we'd love love for you to join us and and contribute toward these um, and and how and look at how we can actually do this the best way for everyone getting some thumbs up that's awesome <laughs> yes thank you thank you that's, that's always reassuring to know that what we've um, started to capture is a feeling that um, resonates with people I think that that's yes love hearts Woo <laughs> thank you um, I guess it's part of the concept work that we're working through as well so um, some some beautiful comments here thank you um jason put together the video it's amazing he is so talented i'm so grateful that he contributed his skills to this <laughs> um and on short short turnarounds amazing. obviously not my sharing the sound skills <laughs> <laughs> thank you to be in the room and, and so we want to, what we wanted to do in our place of standing, um, Tūranga Wāwai group, is that we want to be able to support an individual or an organisation or a group of people who identify as Indigenous or as they wanting to identify their place of standing. Because within Catalyst 2030, we have all the wonderful elements of our secretariat of um, people doing meaning across the whole globe and especially in Aotearoa and so this is what we wanted to harness to harness this energy to be able to connect people with their passions and the processes to allow them to be them um, would you like to add anything else in terms of that Usha please yeah the the only um thought I also had is that um you know, with the place of standing and and um, drawing from the elements and um, you know being guided by by our ancestors, um, this is something with a lot of cultures as well. You know, so um, and you know I'm also very aware that a lot of people try to walk in two cultures, and um, and so you know finding that place really helps them to to build on the, the strengths um, from both sides or, or multiple sides and, um, and really grow, you know, so, so really tap into everything, all the support that, that is there um, from the elements around them. So um, it's a very, very grounding, grounding um, place and very nurturing place. And, um, so yeah, so that's that's how I see it as well. Um, where it, it's just useful to, to anybody really. So, um, but drawing on the, the the cultures, you know, the the ancient cultures that that have have um, have guided us, you know, over over many many centuries. Marjo, would you like to add to that before I? Um, I'm so sorry, my, my darling child just interrupted me. <laughs> so I, I was just uh, distracted for one second. Um, I, so no, I'm so sorry. 
And we were right. And so um, we were going to be placing a few um, organizations that we have in the chat box, just not so much to talk about their wonderful work they're doing around the world right now, but just to allow you to see certain um, organizations and individuals that are inspiring their communities and their people. So in the chat box, as we go along, we'll be placing a few organizations that we have respectfully asked for their permission to be able to put it into the chat. So then people could um, enjoy their work, whether it's in Canada or it's in Australia or if it's in New Zealand for our starting fires that we're burning. Um, and in the question box, if you have any questions as we're going along, because we've got, uh, we're going to have a live, we're going to have a, a little bit later in about 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to have a, a live performance to, um, to, to add to the value of um, what we're looking for to make sure that the gathering for you is helps you to be strong, to love the planet that you want to love for yourself. Because if you can't give aroha or love or aisuru or shalik to yourself, um, then from there, how can you go forward and, and help these meaningful processes that you are in life with children, with your family, with your work, and with future engagements that you see that you want to do. And this is part of the place of standing. And, um, and with um, over time, we'll take elements, beautiful elements from across the globe, because we're very privileged um, today to have um, people from different parts of the, uh, the world who contribute and give meaning to, um, to their humbleness and their um, place of standing. Um, and I'd like to um, call up, if you wouldn't mind, David, I'd love you to give some words of wisdom. David is also part of our um, Catalyst 2030 Fano, Global Fano, and he's doing a lot of meaningful work in the UK, in Spain, and with his uh, European chapter. So, Muchas gracias, okay. David. Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, well, wow, this session is amazing, full of energy, you know? So many ideas and words are coming with the First Nations, the indigenous wisdom, the elements, uh, natural capital, um, abundance. Um, and actually the thing, you know, is um, in Spain, being originally from Spain, we've, we've been a mixture of cultures, you know, Celtic, uh, Iberian, uh, Arab, you know, all, all the history is amazing. And it's about that, it's about remembering who we are and reconnecting with our diversity, you know. Um, so if we look at our history in that way, it's amazing. And, and now, now there's so many people talking about this ancient and indigenous wisdom. And it's more about recon reconnecting with ourselves and remembering, remembering who we really are. So um, just to say, um, thank you so much uh, for all the good work that you're doing, um, for sure. I mean, um, we are here to help and, and, and to learn from each other. So yeah, amazing. Thank you. Back to you. Oh, muchas gracias, David. Um, and and um, I do see that, and it's wonderful words because he is he's a very humble man, but he's doing a lot of useful things in there too around the SDGs and um, people and processes in, um, in Spain and in the UK. And so I'm going to actually, because um, I've got one of my whanau in, in here today, and I'd love her to say a little bit about her, why she wants to be a part of um, the te taio and um, the elements of the world, because um, our youth and our and our younger ones and our present working um, society are so important for the contributions themselves. So, Maya, um, kia ora, Rano, if you wouldn't mind saying something with the in the languages that you know and. Um, you know, because I know it's important because if our future don't want to embrace the responsibilities and the beauty that the world has for us, then um, it makes it harder for us older ones, Maya. So, uh, no, Maya, how do you, Maya? Kia ora. Um, 
So, kia ora ram, um, ko mai atō ku ingoa, huri a hau nō uh, ngā te purau rau o kurungu kata. So, um, my name's Maya, I'm from New Zealand, or Aotearoa, and um, I'm just here today because I'm really um, interested in this kaupapa and what you guys are all about, and um, I really enjoy learning about different Indigenous cultures as well as my own. And so I'm currently studying um, at university here in New Zealand, I'm studying law and Māori and Indigenous studies, so it goes, it's not just Māori, it's also learning about other Indigenous groups around the world, and so like I'm really interested in how the Indigenous people look um, to connect with um, the environment and how though we all come from different spaces and different um, Indigenous cultures, we still have really like lots of similarities. And I think it's really cool how everyone's coming together as one and creating like change. And so I'm really glad to be here and be a part of this just learning. So yeah, <laughs> nga mihi. Well, to me ke Maya, um, nga mihi. Um, Maya, uh, she, is, um, she grew up in a few places. She actually grew up in, um, in Norway and in Sweden, and she lived in the Middle East as a, as a kid, and now she's here learning more of her um, journey in Aotearoa. Um, so she's been living with her um, mum and dad in Aotearoa, and so she is definitely one of the uh, members that we want in our community because they've been able to enjoy and embrace different cultures, even at such a young age. So, um, Nami, uh, and now Marlene, would you like to? They send you got and your you contribution, would... yeah, and your contribution that you feel like you would uh, want to to grow or nurture for yourself and for the community you wish to serve. I am a storyteller and I live in the Alps in Switzerland and I've decided to or I find where I come from is as important as where I go to and so I want to understand the, my own people where we come from Europe and um, especially also in the Alps I think that's um, I've always been living and traveling all over the world but we all come back at one time to there where we come from and this is um where i'm starting my journey now in writing the stories in finding what kind of stories but i also believe that we all share something in common and that's what i want to look for and at one point a long time ago i lived in australia and that really has touched my heart and I kind of forgot it a little bit again and now it comes back again so I'm trying to connect everything a little bit together but it's actually a journey back to where we all come from to our ancestors that's what I want to do to write about and research <laughs> well, then you're in the right place um, you're in the right place and Nami for those beautiful words and Jelena would you like to would you like to say a few words oh yeah kia kora Jelena hi and how um I'm have a Filipino uh, background um I'm have an ethnicity in indigenous communities in Mexico so and and the moment, I've been in Australia for 25 years so, but I work closely with uh, Naranjari community. I live in Ghana country, but I work in Naranjari community in South Australia for over 20 years, as I said in my chat box. So my research focuses on trying to document and record indigenous stories, particularly the elders. So I've been in Wellington already. I've been to Papa and the building that you are in the background, I've been there already and visit and say hello to the elders in there. So I quite, I've been um, interested in the, uh, the Maori culture because it's similar to mine and the arts and culture, the weavings. So it's quite, it's similar to the Filipino tradition of weaving. So I'm always, Close. Um, I always attach to the Mori culture 
and also the Naranjari culture because it's quite similar. So that's why my PhD research is heavily focused on indigenous and trying to find a way to close the gaps between non-indigenous knowledge and indigenous knowledge together and trying to promote that and preserve their wisdom and their stories that would help the younger ones to further and keep this wisdom. Uh, yeah, lovely, Janina. And I see John, um, are you there, John, at the moment? Are you present? Because I'd love to have you to say a few words. Um, John is one of our co and um, around um, charities and giving support to communities across Aotearoa. So, Jason, thank you for inviting me. And uh, it's lovely to be here. I wasn't expecting to be here, but sometimes um, things turn into things that you didn't expect uh, and the beautiful gifts. So thank you for being here. Um, I'm working at the moment a lot with schools and schools in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And I originate from Europe. That's most of my ancestors. There's some that go into Arabia and the Middle East, but, and of course I'm linked to them a uh, long, long way back. But my interest here is where I am and, and where I stand right now, which is in New Zealand. And my four children are here and my wife is here and my wife is Māori and many of the principals I work with and many of the kids in the schools are Māori. And um, I suppose that's why I'm, I'm here because I'm, I'm of this land, which I wasn't born to, but that is so, nurturing to me and to my family. So I want to participate and contribute. So there. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Wonderful, John. Kia ora. Um, was there anyone else who would like to say a few more words before we, um, we're getting closer? And then would you like to say a bit more to add around the social enterprise aspects, um, Marja, or the energy that Catalyst 2030 brings? Yeah, um, thanks, Jason. I, I think that the energy that this group brings, we are an energising um, team of people and we're drawing on the skill sets and the luck and the speaking from our ancestors. They bring us together and, and we've, we've really um, connected in a way that I think has supported us all as individuals already. Um, I guess we're hoping to share that and we're hoping to connect with others who will also add to that energy um, and um, grow from that energy. So, um, yeah, and Asha, I think your, your expertise in the social entrepreneurship world particularly would, um, would fit there too. Thank you, Marjorie. Yeah, so... So um, following on from what Ma just said, you know, um, what we, we um, hope will happen is, is have a community of um, social entrepreneurs, um, you know, and, and, you know, when you think about it, um, First Nations people were the original social entrepreneurs. Um, in fact, there was, you know, like everything they did was about people, you know, planet, and, um, and and that's what, you know, in Catalyst 2030, we're a um, group of social entrepreneurs and, um, and um, activists who want to promote that, you know, we are about people and planet and, um, and, and purpose. You know, everything we do has a purpose for, for supporting um, our future. And so, you know, in this, this group, we want to build a community that actually grows on that ancient knowledge, you know, the, the knowledge that um, the ancestors had um, on how to take care of everything. And so, you know, drawing on that knowledge and, and the social entrepreneurs that are coming up and using, um, you know, what, what, what can happen, you know, from, from, from when, we, when we're taking on from the elements and, and, and the way, you know, Jason had created the, <clears throat> the video from, from Marge's words and, um, it's drawing on those elements to, to make it all 
cohere into into this beautiful planet that we we can we can um, nurture and ourselves on the planet so um yeah and and build this this um in a collective of um and and i know jason was saying we have some some wonderful um social and entrepreneurs and, and the names and organizations of some social entrepreneurs from around the world who who are um you know first nations people and um we'd like to sort of um to put them forward you know and and um and put some names in there so um and yeah so and jason's already started so we can see already you know that these are these are what we can um we can draw upon so all of us and and learn from and um and and come together as as a as a, as a wonderful um i wouldn't like just just a whole you know people the way we started right when jason had something and everyone's chipping in and yelena came jelena came in and and we, everyone's giving um suggestions on how to do it and no one's saying oh you did the wrong thing it's just we're all supporting each other and that's the kind of space we want to create for everybody um, and to nurture everybody and um, and learn from each other. So, yeah, so that's that's that. And, and please look into the um, the links that of the organizations um, that we're sharing. And these are people from around the world, um, from, from First Nations people from around the world. Uh, I believe we will go into the um, the the interlude. So I'll pass you back to to Jason. Yeah, well, just before we have the interlude, I just noticed, um, Vanessa, are you are you there? Because I didn't allow Vanessa, I've just seen um, Vanessa, if she wanted to say, because everyone's um, introduced themselves a little or said why they want to be in this space or uh, looking to explore it. So feel free to um, say something. And if you don't want to, that's Katie Pai. And then, yes, and Br oh, Bram, you're there, Bram. I've just seen you, so please, Bram. Yeah. Thank you, Val. I'm just happy to be here with you guys uh, uh, today. Um, actually, my uh, my my interest in this is, you know, um, more about how learning about our own our own past, our own culture, um, can tie us together. I, I find a lot of the discussions can then degrade into nationalistic nationalistic type uh, things or just pure racism um which obviously there's a lot of history to back that up so really focusing on what brings us together as opposed to what makes each of our unique groups special or something like that so yeah thanks jason no uh, thank you Val. um brown um brown is like uh, susanna and so many of the others in our group that that allow us because there's these elements in life and you need these people that can have the um, ability to move across realms like Susanna and um, and uh, Brahm and there's so many in our in our wonderful Catalyst Fano that allow us to be able to move into uh, and explore places that we may not have been able to if it wasn't for the the, the linkage and the opportunity from our people in our room. So we thank you for that too. And Mesri, would you like to also like to add to our wonderful corridor? Yeah, like Brahma, I'm too happy to be here. Um, I learned about um, the entire idea of how indigenous people are being sidelined very late in my life because it's not something I was taught in school and it's not something I've heard about a lot um, just in the country I was raised and the more I read about it and the more I learn about it it's super interesting which is why I'm here and super excited to hear everything that everybody has to say. Brilliant Mesri and then yeah thank you for your wonderful words and Vanessa, would you like to contribute to the to to the fires or to the to the water or to the winds? Well, I was not the prepared to, to speak, but you know, I come from Haiti and I'm particularly interested in indigenous and uh, and uh, I could I say oppress the community because I'm coming from Haiti. Um, it's a country where the majority is oppressed. Yeah? 
and then has been struggling for, for ages. So, so I'm always interested to see uh, community healing, how community tell their own story, how they, they manage to cohere around, you know, like a, a common uh, goal and project. And, and, then, uh, and then change the narrative and present themselves otherwise than what has been done so far. So really interested in, in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. So, um, Ash, uh, Marja, would you, do we go to the interlude and we bring in um, Professor now, or do we wait till just after that? I think that's that's perfect. Yeah, because I think what Vanessa said is a brilliant um, crossover. So, um, Professor, if you'd like to um, unmute yourself and then what we do in our um, Māori culture, then we have uh, music and um, we have song to be able to allow us to move into different realms because when we open up the conversation, then we bring in the light and the darkness, but it's important that we respect the darkness and the light. So, um, kia ora. This, um, this um, small piece here was done by one of our whānau from Aotearoa here, but she also comes from uh, another beautiful culture too, and she's been giving it to the rest of the world from little old Dunedin. And um, this song is a compilation around um, the beautifulness of um, the Māori words and also um, our Western words of um, artists that contribute to the life force of our people. So. Professor, if you'd like to say anything more about that before you allow everyone to enjoy the space. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, a beautiful session. And I feel very happy to be a part of this lovely Place of Standing group today. Um, and so it's been wonderful to hear everyone's perspective. So um, I am a co-chair of the Aotearoa New Zealand chapter with Jason and our other co-chair, Rasha Abu Safia. Um, and when, when Catalysts asked for submissions of things, um, there was lots of kind of ideas of what you might do. And then there was kind of an other category. And I thought maybe I'll put something in the other category. Um, and so I wrote this song um, and um, Jason, so I don't uh, kind of, pronounce incorrectly the te reo. Do you mind reading the, um, the whakatoki that's in the chat that kind of um, has kind of informed the entire song? Should be in the chat there. Oh, you're on, you're on mute. So yeah, the chorus refers to a Māori whakatoki, uh, iti rea rea, kahu kātea, tei tei kātea. And then as you see the translations, even the smallest rea rea bird can ascend to the great heights of the kahikatea tree. So. Yeah, so, so that really inspired the writing of the song, thinking about how each of us in our own way um, can help to meet the large challenges that we face collectively right now. So um, I'll go ahead and sing it for you. Um, if you really love it, I'm happy to send along the chords. Um, I've written it with, I think, three chords, three very easy chords, because I wanted to make sure that anybody who wanted to sing it or play it uh, would be able to do that. Weave, weave, weave it together. Coming up short, giving up never.
change Trying something different I want to change the rules of the game Cause even the smallest bird can fly up to the top of the tree And I wonder you can miss And find out what could be Oh, Namahi, um, Professor. It was wonderful. It, it always, um, it's such a, it's such a great and meaningful connection between you um, walking through your changes as people, as a person. And so we're, we're very happy and very um, humbled that we have the smallest bird in the Catalyst 2030. So yeah, so. So now we would, Marsha, would you like to talk more about where we want to take it from here for our next part? I was literally just, I have chills. I, I had tears in my eyes. That is so beautiful. And so, so on exactly where we're, we're kind of coming from it. It's, it's so exciting to be with other people who are so like-minded and just want to be together. And it, it really, encompasses everything we're trying to do you know we're, we're trying to bring all of the world's peoples together to to create change because we're at that point where we have to and finally people are, are, are you know as as Bram was saying as well you know people are recognizing that we all just need to work together and bring together our commonalities and bring together these agents of change these passionate people who are willing and able to make that difference so I just I'm so excited that was so beautiful and thank you so much for sharing that gift that is just amazing and beautiful um thank you um <laughs> I think it's been you know it's vulnerable to do something like I'm going to write a song when nobody asked for a song but I think it's what I hope is that everybody thinks of the things that they know how to do and the specific types of experiences and wisdom that they have that they might not think is part of the conversation and realizing that it's not just all, you know, books and theories that people bring really important gifts with them um, that can lead to change in different ways. Absolutely. 
and uh, and I guess yeah that that's kind of why we're so excited to bring this community together as well that fits with like what we're trying to do and it's trying to be flexible and give people what they need to help them reconnect to connect to establish to build their their business selves and their personal selves in in every part of what they do their truest selves which is their interconnectedness um, and everything that they're trying to connect with um, rather than allowing one aspect to take over their lives um, which I think in this world today there is a temptation for us to fall into the trap of you know seeing ourselves in just one light or just one aspect of ourselves and um I think that every part of yourself needs support and that's what we're hoping to do. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would love to um, also hear from people on, on their journey as to what they want to, I, and I guess I, I put together a quick mentee, if we can share that as well. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. I know I'm just making you um, deal with this technology again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I think John's in the in our corner now. Oh, Isn't that John? Yeah. Thank you, John. But also, if people wanted to add into the chat um, what they do, where their organisation is, and what they're um, bringing to the world, this this um, beautiful, multifaceted, multi-skilled group that. Um, so that we can also share that amongst our own networks back home um, and again kind of getting that word out there and getting that the more catalyzers of change all over the world and bring more people to the table bring more people to this conversation um, we would we would love to hear like all of the all of the people as well Perfect, Jason. Well, the, I was thinking, where is that Menti? We were looking at apologies. Um, Mars and I saw it further up. Uh, do we have it further up again? Um, Asha, can you see the Menti? Oh, there it is. And um, see it there, John? Um, I'll copy it to you, John. And then we'll go from there. That was... So if you, <coughs> if you share the screen, we should be able to see people's um, contributions as well. If people are able to go to www.menti.com as well, um, hopefully in another window, because we don't want to lose you from here. <laughs> but um, we're cheekily asking what could this community bring you and what you need and want. Um, if you're you know, able to come and join us, you know, what, what can we do? and what brings um, value to you as working in, in the way that you are. And yeah. And you've gone to the next question, which is where should we focus our efforts first? I like that you just snuck that in so people could start their brains thinking, well played. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just looking in the chat as at, at the awesome, just a couple of organizations that you're a part of. How good is that? I love that people are like, just a couple of amazing organizations that I'm a part of. This is awesome. Springboard Trust and is it Eon Foundation? Awesome. John, would you mind doing a quick a quick one just about what what these organizations are and what they do just so that sure, people can sure. have a feel so for things springboard's been around for about 20 years i think uh i haven't been with it for that long its main focus is uh on leadership for school leaders and um, principals and sort of the, the teachers but mostly focused on principals with the belief that good strategy and good leadership uh, development will trickle down to great outcomes for kids so it's a bit of a, a long bow 
but um, the evidence is showing a, a lot of impact. And for me right now with Springboard, I'm working on a, a tool that schools can use to evaluate their progress against the things that they see as being of most importance to them. It's not a kind of school leaderboard, it's actually really moving those schools and the communities that they're with to achieving their visions and helping them along the way, uh, kind of walking beside them. So it's not political, it's not the Ministry of Education, it's actually just providing that kind of ongoing impact coaching and leadership development support. And then E.ON has been around a similar length of time, um, has been involved in a number of initiatives around the world, um, particularly using technology, the appropriate use of technology to scale education, to reach communities uh, that maybe weren't being reached otherwise, um, looking at the use of mobile and other technologies. Um, and particularly right now, its focus is around promoting play as kind of our forgotten human superpower. The play is the thing that, you know, we move into the future without fear. And so much of today is we're in fear. And when we're in fear, our peripheral vision shuts, you know, and, and we go into this sort of fight flight thing. Whereas in play, the future is possible and, and it's playful and it's exciting. So we're really promoting creativity, play, and a hopeful future, not, not a dystopian one. So there we are, those, those are the two organizations. Amazing, thank you. They, they do sound awesome. <laughs> I, um, we've also got David. David, would you mind speaking to your organizations as well? The contributions you're making? Yeah. Please. Of course, thank you, Maja. Um, yeah, building bridges for the planet, you know, BB for planet is it's just that, you know, building bridges for our beautiful Gaia. This Gaia is a self-evolving organism. Um, so there we are just trying to integrate raising awareness about sustainability, everything to do with open resources for sustainability, and uh, leveling up consciousness, which is to do with you know, shifting our mindsets. Um, so that's that's the, the whole idea there, you know, bringing all this energy and integrating it. So we are identifying so many amazing initiatives out there, which are to do with those, you know, sustainability and consciousness. Um, and it's like what we call a, a, a conscious site for people, for meaning free open resources. Um, and then um, one of the ideas in building a bridge which is, you know, um, because I'm Spanish, but I'm here living in London, trying to also build in a bridge with the Spanish speaking community and the English speaking community. Um, you know, uh, like joining the, the cultures, let's say. So we got um, 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 a sort of an alliance with uh, Gaia Union, which is an uh, organization based in Colombia and they got, uh, an, they're doing an amazing work and I think it's very synergetic of what you're doing because they are linked to the indigenous people there in Latin America um, and they want to bring all this wisdom. So that there is um, a, a huge potential there to integrate all this. Um, and you know, they call them their Los Abuelos, which is like, like grandpas, you know, in, in English. Um, and yes, they are more participative, and, and it's amazing every time that you you get together. You know, you just you, you get like um, how do you say? You like wow, um, you get uh, as you said, thrill and, and goosebumps and everything all the time. So yeah, that's that's just a way. You know, I think integration and, and bringing the energy together is still a challenge, but um, I think we are all here working on it. Thank you. Sounds amazing and and very invigorating <laughs> like i i feel that energy um I, i'm gonna mispronounce your name yelena i'm so sorry if i've mispronounced it <laughs> i have so many challenges across the world that i'm gonna butcher everyone's language uh, and pronunciation jelena jelena yeah Thank if it's in, it in spanish it's helena <laughs> <laughs> 
so my oh, sorry. Uh, so, sorry Marcia. <laughs> so my work as a founder with the Philippine Literacy Backup Project, I co-founded my uh, niece. So it supports uh, marginalized uh, kids from my hometown in the Philippines. So during the high end, uh, we had a big typhoon in the high end. I, I wonder if everybody remember that, the big typhoon in the Philippines, the high end. So there was quite a huge population in the community that were really displaced during the high end, lost their hometown and income and also their houses. So we have this family that are homeless and the kids could not go to the host school. So I co I founded the literacy project to support the kids. So I sponsor about eight kids. So that one, it helps them to provide them with the school bags with all the supplies that they have for the whole year and then provide them with vitamins and food for the family. So I support those um, eight kids and also I support two basketball team in my hometown. <laughs> so that one it provides them with regular practice, especially the COVID time where the kids were all in lockdowns. So they become really anxious and suffered anxiety during the COVID time. And they always stress so the basketball training was providing them an outlet to be able to go out uh, safely within the community as well. So I supported talk basketball team on that side. So, and also the Naranzari Eco Art Co-op, I co-founded it with one of the elders in Naranzari community. So that one provide and support and mentor emerging and established indigenous artists in the community. And then that provide them an income stream, creating their work and selling their artwork online as well. And also we uh, uh, provide contracts. We have commission uh, commissions as well. So it provides incomes for artists in the community as well. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of things to say, but <laughs> At time, we're, we're kind of cutting up our time. So, yeah. I think that's that's really in line with a lot of the people here. Like, it, it's, it brings together people who want to make change, want to do things. And so a lot of us are like, I have to do, I have to do yeah. something. So yeah. we get, we get, we're doing, we get out there and mm. connecting with people and trying to change the world. So with the Nalanzari community, I share my background in marketing, business information management, video recording, back designing, because I'm a, my background is textile arts designer. So I bring into this knowledge to the community as well and share it to them and then put their designs at the textile so that they're able to sell it. Uh, weaving takes a long time to make, whereas textiles is, is quick and they can spread it quickly online and families and friends, they're able to buy it straight away and without the weight on the luggage. <laughs> so yeah, so that's why it's going nice. So my background that kind of useful for the community as well. And also the, for my project I have in the Philippines. Wow. That, that, that's, that's awesome. I love the way your marketing brain was like, yeah, I just need to <laughs> make sure people can carry this in their bag. Buy it now. Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> in the community, we have tourists coming in, backpackers. So I, I have to think, okay, carrying, weaving artwork, it's not going to help in their luggage. So we have to create um, a wearable art that they can carry and wear as well. So that's why it's designed that way. So my designing background come in really handy. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, I imagine it would. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anyone else? I, I'm, I've just, I've been cheeky and gone straight from the, from the chats. Is there anyone who, else who was, um, was keen to speak about their organization and what they do? I know we've got heaps of Catalyst people here um, who are doing amazing work. Um, I will name names. 
I was um, wondering, um, Jason, you know how you've been putting some links to sites and um, and I know you said that you know there were organizations that were happy um, you know for people to 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 hear about them. Um, do do you, are you able to say something a little bit about them? Um, you know, so I noticed there was um, you know Amber and Isaac from our journeys. Um, and then I think yeah, of course. something else. Um, yeah, so if you want to whole, say something about them. The whole placement of it was such for us that um, the universe will provide and enable it to. So one process we've done, which is um, very, very mouldy in Pacifica, is that if you want to be able to use utilise someone else's energy or the what they bring, then I, for those ones that I've been putting up, I rang them or I went to see them and then I asked them if it's okay if I put up their website because I knew they were doing um, helping Indigenous communities whether it's in education so Bentham and Kate all here they are doing wonderful things around language with uh, Te, te Whare Wananga Aotearoa and then Amber Taylor and Isaac Warbrick are doing beautiful things. And when you click on it, you can see what they do in terms of their Indigenous innovations and how they can impact community, people and processes. Um, so, yeah, so um, I actually just had a meet. Uh, I was speaking with Amber this morning and she's a very powerful um, Tamana Wahine. Uh, we say this one who, who when the energy of a, a woman comes out and it's not bound by its um, education and by its system and the people that hold them back and they speak freely because they speak from their ancestral bases looking forward to help their children and their people and when our women our wahine all over the world are afforded this opportunity it's a greater it's a much better engagement for the planet we know this, we don't need to go to university to know this or to go to certain aspects of learning because when you do have a true relationship with life, then you respect the woman that in Māori culture are fundamental because they are the givers and takers of life. And being a giver and taker of life comes the responsibility of your own people, but occasionally... Um, not occasionally, on a lot of times, men, we think we're more important than we are. So this is the balance of um, life. And the other ones I put down was, um, uh, I think it was, I think I've put it, yeah, Parekore is a beautiful um, um, Indigenous movement around uh, food systems. And um, ironic, or coincidentally, the universe wasn't giving them much uh, attention at home here. But once they stepped outside the waters of Aotearoa, they were providing uh, knowledge and, and understanding for communities in India and other places around the world to understand their place of standing around food and water and waste and how you should be thinking of your um, te taiao aspects, which are the, um, the, natural, the, the natural wonders of the world and the natural um, energy cycle so those were some people so I'm very very fortunate the universe allows me to meet these people um, and engage and understand what their contributions are I think those were the ones I put up so far but um, and so yeah that was part of our gathering that unless someone wants if someone wants to put it on there meaningfully then they may because it comes from their heart and their and their soul and their mind and the contributions uh, as such. Thank you, Jason. I, I love that that concept you said, you know, um, of um, seeking the, um, I mean, whether the word is permission or, or the um, the go ahead, you know, and, and that respect that's shown um, is really, really important, you know, that, that um, and, and it's, it's, it shows that the grounding, you know, of, of not saying something about somebody else, but getting it with, um, with the blessing. And, oh, and, um, it's, and, 
and absolutely I sure and I didn't mention um and Namutu Namutu was um it, it grew out of um if most people know about Minecraft and then they had learned they decided they wanted to create a Maori Minecraft so the Pacific Maori community could engage um, in a way of how they see the world and not just as like an operation such as Microsoft that they want to connect, but this was a way to further embed and help them to get children and people involved in their own culture. And um, so that's been experimented this year. And uh, Dan Tefanua Walker has been doing a lot of meaningful work and um, the, the CEO of uh, Microsoft identified that um, indigenous voices need to be in the room. And so he gave the responsibility to Dan Tefanua Walker to be able to reach out. And so we started here in Aotearoa and now he will meaningfully engage with his indigenous communities across the globe to help them create their little story, which we know how important the smallest bird is. Um, Professor, would you like to say anything in there? I'm just enjoying listening to everybody today. I have a small comment to make, which is um, it's connecting everybody. It's so interesting, the you know the the group of us here, and um, and the connections between people that we we may not have really known. So. Um, you know, David brought up about the bridges and, and, and Gaia, and then he said that there was the connection with um, Colombia, and then we've got Susanna, who's from Colombia, and um, and then, you know, Jason was talking about Minecraft and play, and then John was talking about how we, we need to have um, play, you know, back in, in the, as a, as a pedagogy, you know, really um, in, in terms of, of teaching and learning, and, um, you know, for me too, um, um, I actually did a, uh, in my master's, I, I actually focused a lot on neuroeducation. And um, one of the people I, one of the, the professors that I um, really was very um, connected to is a lady in the US. Uh, her name is Mary Helen Imadena Yang. And you can see from her name already, right? There's a lot of cultures in there. And um, and her, her thing was, um, we feel, therefore we learn. And that is very much a very indigenous sort of idea. It's it's that you know you, you don't you don't learn from the head up. You learn with your whole body. And play is the way kids learn. But it shouldn't stop at kids. It should be right across. You know, lifelong learning. We should all be playing. <laughs> and um, and when Jason brought up the Minecraft and the culture and how you learn through your culture, um, through get through games. Um, that's something, you know, that's something. And we can all have, have a space in there as well, you know. So, um, yeah, so that I was very excited hearing all of that and, and piecing them together, you know. It's like we're just this random group of people and we've got so much, in, you know, to connect with. And, and Jelena, when you talked about that, that simple thing of how are they going to take it home, <laughs> you know. And, and it was like, you know, it's magic, right? And um, and those little things are big, and uh, and that's what the, the the community can do. You know, they can we can we can have those ideas and link them and tell somebody else, and and that idea can be used by somebody else in in another area. So um, so this is exactly why you know we, we come together and and make things happen. So um, you know have our have our place of standing, and. Um, and I think there's a there's a comment made by Bram. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, don't grow up. It's very boring. <laughs> I, I just want to be a child my whole life. <laughs> so so yeah, it, it's so much more fun. And um, and just play. You know, we, we play, and um, and then it's not about being right or wrong. You know, you don't have children. Um, sitting there and and thinking oh hmm, how do I do this walking where's the book let the teacher come and tell you how to walk <laughs> it's just to get up do it fall down get up again 
and uh, you know, and then have a, and they laugh and they whatever, they'll cry, whichever. But you know, it's all it all happens, and um, and that's what we we have to bring into our our co creations as well. That there's no right or wrong. We're creating together, and um, and have fun, and uh, let's make a game out of it. <laughs> Who wants to do that? I'll come play with you. In fact, I, I would invite everyone here to come and play with us because I feel like this group, um, as we grow, and I, I suspect that we will explode because we're all explosive, excited, passionate people um, who are looking to change the world. And by making these connections, which Asha, your brain is amazing. You are phenomenal to put all of these linkages together and at, just as people are talking you're like ah oh, I can connect these people these people are, these people belong together it's it's such a beautiful skill set and um, I think that we are we are moving into that space really beautifully um, so please come join us we will um, welcome you we will support you um, that's that's kind of what we're aiming for here so please come join us in our place of standing let us be your place of standing let us come together and let us change this world in the ways it so desperately needs with that unless asha or jason you wanted or anyone else wants to take any last words yeah let's tell some stories and and have some play yeah john please if you want to say something yeah then you have to put up your it was just there. a build really on asha's play and the remarkable thing about play is that you know true play has a sort of a contract of no harm you know we might knock each other over but we kind of say sorry you know and uh, and and pull the other person up but with play also we get to laugh and we get to smile and it's something that i hadn't realized until very recently was that we all smile in the same language and as mother teresa said you know the smile is the beginning of peace and i think that's the other power of play is it's uplifting i can't remember who it was who said it but the opposite of depression is play um or the opposite of play is depression you know and um so it's just such a wonderful thing that we have been gifted with and so yes i take up the offer let's play together <laughs> Yeah, and, and so this is just illustrative of our Tūranga Waiwai, our place of standing. And so when the world or people are allowed to express themselves, as you have wonderfully done today, then the fire burns meaningfully and the wind blows to allow us to, um, to feel that connection with um, our people and processes. And it's so important fundamentally today. And one of the beautiful things I've got out of Catalyst 2030 just this week was um, our Aotearoa um, chapter um, co-chairs. We came together for the first time, uh, kanohi ki te kanohi. So it was in face-to-face -face. and all the energy we'd been allowing to help each other, whether it was a project or a direction to bind us towards helping our Catalyst 2030 Fano family and achieving certain things. And we have been laughing every time we meet, we're meeting tomorrow for lunch and this energy, and then the ideas are flowing. Professor provides ideas, Russia does, I do, other people in the room. And we've just been laughing the last few days and smiling and we'd only just come together because and that's why we have to pay thanks to our ancestors, but also to Catalyst 2030, to having that um, matrix of offerings to allow it to come together and allow this energy greater than a governmental system or what people think is a system that should be the right thing to do, because it's no coincidence to me that you are in this room and you are where you are for your place of standing.
And if there's anyone else who'd like to say anything, Vanessa, Marlene, you know, you're more than welcome because you're part of the, um, and that's the thing when we open up the lights in the darkness respectfully, then you become family and you become part of the family no matter where you are on the globe because after all, Tihei Modi Ora is the life force of yourself and the combined energy that we bring as a people. Please, uh, David, yeah. Nami. Yeah, thank you. Um, there is another connection um, Asha didn't mention. I love basketball, so I want to be part also of one of the teams that uh, Jolina is. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it's amazing. And, uh, Yes, we are all learners, um, and you know this idea of do what you love and love what you do, and playing, learning by playing or playing and learning. I mean, everything is resonating so much, you know. So I think is, yeah, it, it, it is, you know, it's, it's reconnecting with the with the kid that we have, you know, inside, and and we are very young, all of us, in uh, young souls. You know, um, and I, I, I like this idea of the session today together as one, you know, and, and oneness is something that is also resonating more and more every day. So, yeah, hopefully we are like uh, soulmates or uh, teammates here. So let's see what is what is next. Yeah, muchas gracias, amigo. Um, the um i was just um, conscious of the time because i know it's been um, a wonderful contribution for everyone so we have a couple more minutes and um, anyone would like to say anything else and if not then we can all meaningfully close off the the hui our gathering and our place of standing but um yeah the next two minutes if anyone would like to say anything yes i will actually like to say that uh well as you know, I'm actually part of Catalyst, but on my personal side, uh, well, from Colombia, we are an indigenous land as well. And just between work, because then this is what I do for working, this part of opening up my eyes for the recognition of the indigenous land that we are, just came out, as Mishri was saying, very late because of the Oteroa chapter and the Australasia chapter. And I've been sharing with all my friends, like, it's crazy how we are born in this land, but we are not thinking about our ancestors and all this point of recognizing where we are coming from. I need to say that it touched me personally and it just came at my 30 years old, which is very late and it's sad that it didn't came before. So I'm very happy to be here and to share this space with you. And I would love to be engaged also from my personal side as well. So thank you for opening up my eyes to this. Oh, muchas gracias, uh, Susanna. You're most welcome. I mean, you, um, you, you give so much aroha to our different groups. And so it's, um, yeah, it's much appreciated. And of course, for your Colombian Fano and Latino Fano, it's, um, it's really, it's really empowering. And it gives us or gives me inspiration to want to help to process us more. So we thank you yeah, for your wonderful words. And would anyone else like to say something before we close off our gathering today? I would like to say something very personal, something I didn't expect when I came here. I just wanted to listen to it. And um, then when David started to talk, um, I noticed there is a lot of um, understanding but most of all is my son just moved to Barcelona, which is not always so easy for me because he's my only kid. And seeing there is someone like David who is from that country and I feel like we have the connection in that group just really touched me deeply. So it's a really, very personal, something I never expected, but it makes me feeling like my son is away, he's not really away, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so okay then i'm if um, it's everyone okay with everyone then i'll close it off for us and um I, we just uh, marja asha would you like to say something before we close it off 
because we're very humbled to be in the room, but we know that we have a focus around SDG, Hoora, and moving towards giving that. But if we cannot do it, if our people don't contribute to it and give the love and aroha that they can to systems and um, organizations. So last chance, everyone, for tonight anyway, because there'll be other uh, chances. Uh, but um, if not, I'll close it off for us. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for sharing of yourselves and um, just coming to this space with the open minds and the open hearts <clears throat> um, to to hear us and and to to be with us and to contribute to this space. And we look forward to moving forward with you in the future. So thank you, everyone. Yeah, Maya, would you like to say something? Um. Well. Big mihi out to everyone. I really um, it's real cool being part of something, especially because obviously I'm pretty sure I'm the youngest one here. So like, <laughs> it's cool um seeing how you guys are started something and it's, and for me being younger, I feel like it's my responsibility to like keep this um this sort of kopapa alive and um yeah, I think every everyone here represents kotahitanga to me and uh, which means like coming together and uniting as one and you know the whole thing of when you're stronger you're together it's better off than being by yourself so yeah <laughs> oh to Mickey and Maya okay and that's appropriate there so tihe mauri ora i pahiko tomato topona ora i roto i tomato fukoki papatuanu tu whanau Kia whakairia te tapu, kia wātea ai te aha, kia taruki whakataha ai, kia taruki whakataha ai. Tērā pēra kia whakamohi o tanga e koe, ū o rangapono. Haumi e, hui e, tāiki e. Our life force combined with our Mother Earth family. Restrictions are moved aside, so the pathway is clear. To, turn, to return to everyday activities. May your awareness open up your true existence. Together today, draw together, united as one. Pōmari everyone and have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, and we look forward to you coming to our gathering again. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. You're most Thank welcome. You, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. everyone. Stay seen. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. That Thank was you, John. beautiful. Thank you, John. I know. That's, oh. yeah. <laughs> beautiful, John. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank guys. You. Yeah. Yes. Well done, Marja. Well Actually, done, that team. Was amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah, Jason. Awesome. Oh, yes. so, not, so, not the sharing of the sound. So but. perfect. No, Jason, that was, that was perfect. perfect. It was perfect because it showed what we were about. We, we actually no, did that, that to you deliberately. We did it deliberately. <laughs>